Friends, let us center our hearts in prayer. Loving God, by your Spirit this day, help remove from our minds and focus anything that keeps us from our awareness of you. Settle our hearts and center our minds, that we may worship you with our full being. In Christ we pray. Amen. <laughs> Would you please join me in the call to worship? 
which is printed in your bulletin. Loving God and blessed Christ, the creator and savior of all, both near and far, by your spirit, enable us to worship your divine majesty so that with all the company of heaven, we may magnify your glorious name. Welcome to worship at Bradley Hills Presbyterian Church. Whether you are here for the first time or a longtime member, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're joining through the gift of technology on our live stream, we are so glad that you are here today. We look forward to having a chance to connect during coffee hour following worship. We invite you to take home one of the blue welcome visitor packets here in our narthex and for folks to sign and mark and pass the red fellowship pads on the end of their pews. We'd love to have a chance to walk the journey of life and faith with you, to share the ministries of our church along with you. If you are online, you can open up today's bulletin and make an offering through the Give Now icon and look at the children's bulletins for today and announcements in the life of our community. And the, the same goes for folks here in the sanctuary through our bulletin. If you are new, if you are wanting to get more connected or learn about the ministries of, of Bradley Hills, we're going to be having some gatherings to get connected and explore membership on July 2nd and 9th in Covenant Hall in person and online following worship. And sending Denise or myself an email, our emails are in the bulletin, we'd love to have a chance to, to meet directly, separately, if those dates don't work, to, to find out how we might be able to support you on this journey of life and faith. As Denise mentioned, 
much gratitude to Lily and Bruce for their gifts of music and helping to offer them today and leading us in our appreciation of God and God's grace. Thank you, Lily and Bruce. And, and as Denise mentioned, the opportunity for uh, our young members to feel comfortable in this space is a gift here indeed. And so we invite that continued participation of the community. As you see announcements in the life of our community, I will commend to you, as you'll see around our building here, information on the Juneteenth weekend schedule. That is next week, and there are three days of activities with a variety of super interesting and important opportunities. Everything from blues, jazz, music, and concerts, to baseball and softball skills, to children's carnivals and road races, to a variety of worship and service activities. And so, both in your bulletin and around our building here, you'll, you'll see uh, announcements about uh, our participation as, as we're one of the folks who are helping to support uh, the Scotland interfaith uh, effort, as well as that church on Seven Locks. So I commend, uh, over the three-day period, uh, participating in, in one or more of the activities. Uh, uh, many of us are going to be there on Monday morning the 19th, and you can see Denise or other members of our community here for more information if you'd like to participate. Following worship today, there'll be a very brief congregational meeting to elect our nominating committee for the next year. The nominees are in our bulletin. One o'clock today will be Daniel Plain's memorial service. There's information for parents on our church school in the bulletin uh, following worship today. Following the children's message today about where uh, children uh, ages 6th through 5th grade go to the second floor uh, classrooms. And our Smart Sacks community, there is an uh, announcement about Smart Sacks, which uh, really follows the calendar year of Montgomery County Public Schools as we put together food for those in need in our community. It is a thank you note today. Uh, as we transition towards the summer, we'll have three weeks in July where Smart Sacks will participate, but it takes a break as we move towards the summer season. So there will not be Smart Sacks today, but we will certainly have it going each week as we get into fall. And so friends, may we put aside all that which keeps us from an awareness of the presence of the Holy as we open our hearts now fully to worshiping God. Friends, God hears our confessions with an ever merciful and loving heart and forgives us over and over again. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So believing in God's steadfast love and faithfulness to us, let us join together in the prayer of confession and adoration, followed by a time of silence for your own personal confessions. Let us join in unison. Ever creative God, you promised to make all things new, yet we resist change. We resist transformation. We resist serving other people. Hear the confessions of our hearts. Hear our fears. Hear our resistance. Forgive us. Free us. Fill us with dreams, with visions, with vitality as we confess. the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
Women's Moment today, and the same for girls and boys wherever you are in the country worshiping with us on our live stream today. You know that, uh, how long do you think uh, Bradley Hills has been here? How old do you think Bradley Hills is as a community? What do you think? 68 years. <laughs> Fantastic. You are, you are right. You are right. Usually I was expecting people to say like three years or like seven years and it goes up. And you got it right on the first try. That is fantastic. And that is great. That is great. So well done. So it is 68 years. That is the right answer. This community has been here for 68 years. And you know what? There are some members of this community who have been uh, a member of this church since it was founded here. That means that they can remember being your age. When they were your age, they were in this sanctuary 60 or more years ago at your age, right? Can, can anyone remember, let me not be 68 years, but remember being a kid here or a teenager here? Is there anyone in the room who can remember, and some hands are going up here, remember being a kid and a teenager in this Space And how about being a, a kid or a teenager uh, in another church somewhere where church was important to your foundation of your life? So a lot of hands going up of people who were your age, whether it was in this church or in another community. Today, as we move and begin towards moving towards the rhythms of the summer, it is a day in which we, we celebrate the intergenerational nature of our church the intergenerational nature of our church, where we have people who are a variety of ages, a variety of places in life's journey, who all come together uh, in a unique way in this place called the church. Bill Goddard once said that wisdom is seeing life from God's point of view. And there's a lot that our members who have been a member for a long time in this church have a lot of wisdom that they share with us in worship and in service in education, and in fellowship. And so today, we're going to say thank you, and I'm going to ask your help in helping to honor some of our long-term uh, members of our community. We're going to, I'm going to need your help in clapping, in delivering flowers, and in praying a blessing along with me, all right? So in your bulletins, you know, in your bulletins, uh, we have listings of many of our long-term members uh, listed and grouped by uh, the length of time they've been a member of this community. And so for folks who, I know there are many long-term members who are joining us online as well, and we give thanks for your witness in this community as well as we honor you uh, too. So I'd like anyone who's been a member of this community for 20 to 30 years, you may not be, if you've been a member for more than 20 years, up to 30 years, raise your hand for just a moment. Thank you, friends, for your witness in this community for, for that time here. What if you've been a member for uh, 30 to 40 years, all right? So in our bulletin, we start listing people there. There's a number of folks who 30 years ago this year, they joined the church, and then, and then some who are many who have been a member for 30 to 40 years. Could you stand if you've been a member of, I don't want to overly complicate this, but you know what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> 30 to 40 years. Frank, friends, thank you for your witness in this community. All right, boys and girls, not just clapping, but now we're going to deliver some presents, all right? So that some flowers here. Anyone who's been a, a member of this community for 40 or more years, either stand if you would or raise your hand and and uh, girls and boys, now you get to participate by delivering flowers, all right? So anyone who's standing, that means anyone who's been a member for 40 or more years, I want you, uh, they're going to either stand or raise their hand. Let's deliver presents, all right? So I'd like you all to, to come and everyone take a flower, all right? And start delivering flowers here. I'm getting out of the way, all right? <laughs> Start delivering flowers here. Everyone take one flower, all right, and go find somebody who is standing up or has their hands up. And if you need to give them two flowers, that's fine too, all right? All right, so that everyone gets to deliver a flower. Let's make sure that all the flowers get delivered out of that basket. Did everyone have one? Go deliver some flowers, folks. 
Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Burns there. Yep, good, good, good. We have Miss Tusty in there, Mr. Hickey there. Let's go deliver some flowers. And once you've delivered your flower, let's come back to the chancel and have a seat, all right? Friends, thank you for this intergenerational witness known as Bradley Hills. And if you, br if you bring back a flower, that's fine too. We will find a way to deliver them. If you're online and you want to come tomorrow, we'll, we'll give you more flowers. I've got a couple extra. Oh, you can't find it? Well, we're, we're going to give them to someone tomorrow. Let's put the flowers back in the basket here for now. Um, if you have been a member, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on, if you've been a member for 50, oh, thank you. Put those, put those back. I'll get the rest of them there. Anyone here been a member for 50 or more years? Why don't you stand again here? 50 or more years. Thank you, friends. What about 55 or more years? Keep standing, 55 or more years. 60, yeah. 60 or more years. 60 or more years. You got Mr. Gaffney there, John, Mr. Grabowski here, standing here, Carol standing, Jean. 60 or more years. We're going to stop there for a second. Friends, thank you for your witness. That is extraordinary. That, that means if we have been here for 68 years as a church, that, that any of these folks who've been a member of this community for more than 60 years were your age uh, or around your age and participating in the life of the church. And so this is a place that we all love, that we are planning on it being here uh, 60 years and more from now by God's grace, uh, and we give thanks for the incredible witness of this community. So boys and girls, will you join me? Let's, let's hold our right hand up in the air, and let's pray a blessing upon Uh, the commitment of God to this community and our long-term members. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the commitment, involvement, and love of our long-term members, for the lessons they teach us, and for helping to build this community. Bless them, hold them, watch over them. May your spirit be present so that we all may feel your love and commitment to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, thank you so much for helping honor this intergenerational witness at Bradley Hills. As you go to church school now, uh, or back to uh, your folks or whoever brought you, may you do so in peace. Go in peace. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
temples to preserve the truth and prevent moral decay in the world. And just as tasteless salt lacks value to the person who uses it, so too those who profess discipleship without commitment prove valueless to the work of the kingdom. Since Jesus is the light of the world, we know, as John tells us, those who follow him are called to reflect that light. Much as lights from a city illuminate the countryside around it, Christians are called to let their good work shine in the world so others might praise God. <clears throat> Commentators write that both metaphors of salt and light raise important questions of involvement in society. Jesus' point is that those who follow him cannot be content to remain the world's light in a merely theoretical sense. They are called to reflect the light of the one who ultimately shines it. I love how Fred Craddock puts it, that the you in the passage is plural. That the life that Jesus calls his disciples to is never individualistic, but conceived throughout a life within a community of faith. A community charged with a mission to and in the world. Many of you have expressed appreciation for the many who continue to lead us in being such a heavily missional church. Last year, according to our annual report, 37 local, national, and global nonprofits received funding through our annual operating budget. 22 local and global organizations received financial support through our alternative giving efforts. You raised significant funds for special denominational offerings, supported refugee families, added new mission partners in D.C. and beyond, and broadened impact near and far. You again supported a seminary student, a local congregation, and an interfaith effort as part of our racial justice work. You devoted over $134,000 in free or reduced rent to support young students, those in memory care and those needing counseling support just inside these walls. You supported a staff as we devote significant time to all sorts of missional projects, including the time that we spend to those who come here through these doors seeking help of any kind. And you devoted countless hours to volunteering and all sorts of missional activities through this church. And beyond that, more than a few of you came to me at different times talking about the significant funds and time that you donate to all sorts of organizations in the city inspired specifically by your faith and the values you learned and had reinforced at Bradley Hills. And now, on the fourth Sunday of our sermon series on our new strategic plan, we come to serve. That phrase, serve, is the fourth value that our strategic visioning task force is calling us to focus on as we seek to do even more in this area. To meet the needs of the world through service, based on the feedback that you gave them about what you were most interested in. They call us to give glory to God through Christian ministry and interfaith programs providing opportunities especially for hands-on service, collaborative work with local organizations and social justice programs rooted in the Bible. Our task force challenges us to develop deep partnerships that change the lives of those in need and engage our members in hands-on service, to broadly communicate and emphasize that there is flexibility in, in being part of a community that helps volunteers, and meets people where they are. That we are called to provide opportunities to get involved in assisting those in need. To explore how our building can continue to grow as a site for hands-on mission. To partner with opportunities of local organizations through on-site presences at Bradley Hills. To expand the ways we can implement the ideas of our racial justice task force and continue to grow in our partnership in acts of justice outside our walls. 
to strengthen our unique interfaith covenantal relationships and offer more interfaith service hands-on opportunities. And finally, to offer more hands-on missional opportunities for our youth involved both in summer trips and in year-long projects. The ideas that you shared with our strategic visioning task force underscore and are consistent with what I hear during our new member meetings. Perhaps the most frequent idea that people share to me who are new in our community about what they'd like to get involved in has to do with doing more hands-on service through the church, particularly with my family. Or how do we invite the community to do missional work on site here as well? Certainly between smart sacks and refugee projects, angel gift tree, coat drives, and feeding families, Becky's house, and many others, you have, you have shown your interest in participating. A willingness to go outside of comfort zones. And so our task force invites us to consider what are the major ways we are called during this next five years to expand or develop the high impact projects that we are called to focus on to serve. And whenever possible to do so in, in an interfaith way for truly our interfaith witness is perhaps the most unique nationally known part of our community are creating a, a house of prayer for all peoples, as Isaiah put it, where Muslims, Christians, and Jews worship at 6601 Bradley under our roof each week. Truly a unique witness in a divided world. As we think theologically about where this leads, let me share something that I reflect on this week each year. A few years back, this very week, I had a come-by-here moment that always I think about in early June. On a very rainy night, I spent the night joining caseworkers from Bethesda Cares, a local nonprofit that you all helped found and continue to support, as we went to several homeless camps in northern Montgomery County to interview residents there. There were two prominent camps behind the White Flint Mall, one in the woods behind the dental office and the other beyond the railroad track and an old car lot. We walked down mud paths to the tents and benches where the residents congregated. I saw the clothes hanging from the trees to dry and at each time we noticed they became even more wet from the rain. There in the woods in the dark, we slipped as we walked. We were there to help Bethesda Cares caseworkers interview residents for their vulnerability index, a survey intended to determine which members of our community are the most vulnerable to medical issues and environmental challenges. We sat on benches and in the tents lit by flashlights and asked questions about medical histories, employment, life, and ways of living. The residents have come to know members of the Bethesda Cares community and were happy to see that we brought clean socks and, and other lights along with us. We asked questions about their life's journey, about how they, they got to the place where they are, how long they had been living there, some in the camps for more than five years. A different perspective from my own experiences with the homeless in New Haven or Boston, Cincinnati, or elsewhere. I was deeply moved by the conversations. One man born just south of Dayton, Ohio, as I was, yet in very different circumstances, have led us to different places. Another man who drinks a pint of hard alcohol each day and had just finished as we talked. Another man, once a larger man, down to fewer than 80 pounds, wasting away in his tent through liver disease. A girl with three kids who we asked where they were, and in great sadness she answered, with my mother, for addiction had left her unable to care for her children. One man who told me that as a boy he had wanted to be a preacher, or at least his mom wanted to be him, him to be a preacher, he went to college for three years, but now worked at a gas station 
and every other Saturday night used his paycheck to buy a bag of powder cocaine, living in the camp as a result. Most of the residents lacked insurance, and their medical care came from emergency rooms. One man I interviewed had visited the ER seven times that month alone. The sound of the train, so near, loud and powerful that it rattled the ground, raced by roughly every 30 minutes, making it hard to talk, let alone sleep. Now, some of the people I talked to said that they didn't want to get help or get out, but most did. Part of our response was to figure out, in some ways, who the leader in the camp was. If you get the leader of the group to buy into the programs, others would follow. Much of the key came from the lack of affordable housing in our area. People could get out of the tents and into housing, then they could find an incentive to find treatment, stay clean, or perhaps a job, the leader said. But housing in our area was too expensive. Jennifer Haddock's of Pittsburgh Theological Seminary writes that mission is not what we do for God, but what God is doing through us in the world. In many ways, the song Kumbaya is ultimately about people asking God to come by here through others and help. Friends, as our task force is inviting us, this community can be through its hands-on ways a way in which each of us can grow to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God as we consider the covenant we have with our Creator. When we leave our comfort zone and are willing to come by where the needs are, in whatever way we do, we invoke deep emotions within ourselves. A few months ago, a, a man came to our early worship service I knew the man from one of my Bethesda Help experiences, another nonprofit that you helped found and lead. We invited him to join the Sunday prayer circle, and I asked him to come back during the week so we could talk. Frankly, often when people come seeking a different kind of help, and I suggest that they come back during the week, they don't usually return. But this man did, and we talked, and we prayed, we stayed in mutual relationship for a time. Friends, just as winter can lead us inside and to focus inwardly, summer has the potential to invite us outside to engage in the world. In a few moments this morning, we will commission members of our community who will go into South Carolina, not far from where the Gula Geechee culture may have inspired songs like our next hymn, to make a difference for those in need there. Others we will commission are going to learn in North Carolina and Virginia. And on our Zoom call this past Thursday for the mission trip, Matt Nabinger, who is put together and leading the mission trip, explained its goal as, quote, to share God's love through acts of compassion and service. Perhaps invoked by the Spirit, Matt was sharing what is really a fitting summary and statement of what our strategic plans serve goal seeks to do. And as our task force inspires us to serve, let us prayerfully consider where each of us may be being led next. For Bradley Hills is and should be a place where people come by here and find an ear that listens and find that they are welcome. In whatever way we can, and whatever way makes sense, through the support we can offer. This should be a place where people come by here and see that we are preparing sacks of food and preparing missionaries to go into the world. This should be a place where visitors, new members, and long-term members come by here and find ways to use their gifts to serve to meet the needs of the world in fulfillment of God's covenant and furthering their walk with Christ. Because any church of Jesus Christ should remember that in Christ the divine came by here 
to see the needs of the world God had created, and through the Holy Spirit, decided to stay and help. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. Kumbaya, Lord, kumbaya. Kumbaya, Lord, kumbaya. O oh Lord, kumbaya. time, I'd like to invite all of those who are going on one of our three summer trips to come forward and stand on our chancel, if you would, for uh, commissioning. And for those who are online, I know many of you online, or some are participating on these trips as well, we're going to be commissioning you as well this day. Matt Nabinger, uh, Denise, others, other leaders who have planned a wonderful series of opportunities this summer, mission trips to South Carolina, as mentioned, spiritual trips to Massanetta and Montreat. These are powerful experiences that you will remember for forever, and, and we are so proud of each of you who are going to represent us on these trips and for the learnings that you will bring back and for the experiences that you have. You indeed are salt and light. And as you are being sent to represent Jesus Christ in the world, we have a series of questions to prepare you to be sent out. To those who are participating in our mission trip in, in near Charleston, South Carolina, Julia Anderson, Adam Browning, Emily Coffey, James Eliason, Carol Frankel, Andrew Gray, 
Simone Kang, Chauncey Lifferton, C.J. Coffinger, Will Coffinger, Hannah Lowe, Matt Nabinger, Ben Scribner, Lauren T. Will you accept the people whom you serve right where they are? Oh, Kim Brinkman. Yes, Kim Brinkman is. Kim, Kim Brinkman answered the call to serve. So remember, so this is, this is hot off the press. Remember how I've been up here bothering you week after week talking about how this, we need a chaperone? So even after we already gotten the list of names, hot off the press, Kim Brinkman steps into the breach to serve. So. You move it along? All right, thank you. That's a good idea. Yeah, thank you. Uh, will you accept the people whom you serve right where they are and just the way they are? If so, please say we will. Will you work cooperatively, mutually supporting one another, being sensitive to the needs of your fellow team members? If so, please say we will. And through your thoughts and actions, will you demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ to the people you serve? If so, please say we will. To the participants of our Massanetta trip as, as well, uh, will you be open to meeting new people, making new friends, and growing in relationship with your fellow trip participants? If so, please say, we will. Will you, through play and recreation, come, to, come close to one another and to the one who created you? If so, please say, we will. And during your days of service, will you do your work cooperatively, mutually supporting one another, and knowing that you represent Jesus Christ to the people you serve? If so, please say, we will. And to our participants of our Montreat trip, will you be open to meeting new people, making new friends, and growing in relationship with your fellow trip participants? If so, please say, we will. Will you, through your play and recreation, come close to one another and to the one who created you? If so, please say, we will. Will you support and uphold your fellow trip participants, looking for ways to encourage one another and build camaraderie? If so, please say, we will. And will we, as the congregation and friends of Bradley Hills, promise to support the work of our youth and their leaders in all three trips throughout their weeks? If so, please say, we will. We will. As we pray for all three of our trips, we participate through the Spirit in the work of spiritual growth and of mission to which each of you is called. And so let us pray. Loving God, bless and put into the hearts of each of these disciples your Spirit. Bless them guide them, empower them in their growth and service this summer. In Christ we pray. Amen. So friends, you are commissioned as representatives of the body of Christ. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all to the glory of God. Thank you for serving, leading, and may you be blessed in your trips. Go in peace. Go in peace. Friends, on this day of pride and joy, let us share our gifts of time, talent, and treasure with our church and the world <clears throat> as we strive to use all of our resources to create a world and a church where all are welcome and honored, loved, and fully known. May the ushers come forward to receive our gifts.
that we come to in our service where we um, offer our pastoral prayers as well as pray for one another uh, as we celebrate our joys and celebrations and as we uh, pray for one another in any concerns that we may have. So at this time, are there any concerns or uh, celebrations and joys that you would like to share at this time? So celebrations for graduations and Carol's daughter's birthday. Lord, with thanksgiving. Any others? Oh, yes? My best friend from high school had a stroke on Monday um, and uh, had surgery. He's recovered very well, but still has some uh, speech impairment. I would Ask for everyone's prayers for his full recovery. And your friend's name? Is John. John. So prayers for John as he recovers from uh, surgery and from a stroke. Lord, Here's hear our prayers. prayers. Anyone else? Yes. For justice to rain down on this country. Yeah. Lord, Hear our prayers. That was for justice to rain down on this country. Think of the uh, synonyms, rain, and then R-E-I-G-N. So um, yes, Lord, hear our prayers. Anyone else? I don't think it's synonyms. I think it's homonyms. Please join me in prayer. God, may we walk with you this approaching summer season. May we be ever mindful of your presence in our coming and going. Please provide safe travel, especially for those traveling great distances and even to countries on distant shores including Claudia and Holly, Dave and Brigida. And Lord, before we have all of our ask, we just give you praise and glory and honor. We're so thankful to be able to come to you to worship freely, to call on you, to just trust that you hear, hear us as we pray. 
And so it help us to be aware of your presence in our times of joy and celebration with thanksgiving for new births and the anticipation of bringing forth new life in our times of despair, in our times of treatments for healing and in our recoveries of surgery. We remember Susie and Peg. In our times of grief, we remember Daniel and Albert, Hugh and David. And we thank you for the gift of the days that we shared with them and for the gift of the memory so that our loved ones we know will always be with us forever, present with us just as you are. And Lord, we know that grief has no expiration date, and so we pray for all of those who continue to remember, because we don't forget our loved ones. And we're thankful for those who have spaces in the columbarium that allow them to feel the presence of their loved ones in these spaces. Lord, may we hear your voice during these times when we ponder weighty decisions, what college to attend, the thoughts about new homes and moving away from places where we've lived for maybe half a century, and other opportunities. May we feel your presence and comfort during times of accident, such as those in India and in disaster as the floods in Ukraine. And may we continue to pray for those who live under the threat and experience of war. Lord, please come by here. May we see you in all the beauty that is around us, the beauty of summer flowers and the rains that refresh the air following the smoke-filled days, in graduations and weddings. Lord, thank you for the glimpse of the delight of young children, of brothers tying knots in their strings in their shorts, and mothers looking perplexed as to why would they do such a thing. Lord, we come this morning with open arms, with pride and joy. We welcome people from every nation and ethnic community into our church, into your church, for it is your mission. We welcome and affirm gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, same gender loving, straight, old, young, disabled, able-bodied, people with questions and those with answers. All are welcome here as we live into the life of harmony and unity that you intended for us to have a world where no one is excluded from the sanctuary of your love and your grace. Lord, we thank you for pink candle days of joy, where we are so very aware that you are always, always with us in what some might perceive the most mundane experiences. And so this morning we open our hearts to you as we pray the prayer that our sibling taught us. We pray in the name of Jesus, our risen and redeeming Lord, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
go forth into this day, let us go with strength in our unity, with pride in our diversity, and with hope in this community that God loves and gives us an opportunity to be a part of. And so we go forth to love and serve the Lord. Let us rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be your gift this day and always. And together may we say, Amen. Amen. What a blessing, what a blessing. Uh, I invite members to stay for just a moment. We're gonna have a very brief congregational uh, meeting here to elect nominating committee. But first, wherever we are this day, let us find a way to share the peace of Christ with someone. May the peace of Christ be with you. And go